Hello again. I want to address the new year, the biblical new year. Um, I want to address a flaw, a error in the Jewish new year. The, the Jews keep a Talmudic calendar. They hold the Talmud writings higher than they do the Torah. And that's what Messiah rebuked them for over and over and over. Um, the equinox and the barley um, are two things that they use to start their new year. And I will address the equinox first. There is no possible way for you to observe the time of the equinox, except that you first establish at the point where you are, at your specific time. So I'm here in East Texas, and if I was going to establish the day of the equinox, where I am, I would have to start by first placing a pole in the ground and marking the shadows of that pole daily until I come to my solstice. And the longest shadow from that solstice I would mark. And then I would wait six months and again mark the shadows so I knew the day of the solstice and mark that shadow again. Okay, so from the point of that shadow, I then have to have a reference of due east. Where, where do I get that reference? <laughs> So I can take and scribe an arc from each shadow um, toward the west and where them marks cross, that would um, be my westward point. But then I've got to know where due east is. Do I go by... Um, the magnetic east, or do I go with uh, what they, uh, and there's two different measurements, I can't remember what the other one is, you got magnetic north and true north, okay, so do I go by magnetic east or true east, this is a problem, and how do I determine those marks? Magnetic is what we get from a compass, and true is measured from the North Star. So, if I measure from the North Star, I would have to be 90 degrees from the North Star to mark my true east point. Or I can use a compass, find north, go 90 degrees, and that would be my magnetic east. So then I put a stake up and I would have to wait and watch the shadow every morning and then determine when that shadow crossed the center point of the two arcs I made from the solstice shadows. It's the only way you can observe the equinox. You can go to NASA, Nasha, the deceiver, the military, or the Vatican, and you can get these dates from them, or we can get our dates from Yahuwah. But I want to address the error of the Jews. Um, 
in the days of Noah, Noah went into the ark on the 17th day of the second month. Noah knew the time. And he came out of the ark on the 27th day of the second month. Them dates are very, very important. There's a reason that Yah, Yahuwah, gave them dates to Noah. They have to do with the Passover. But here's the error of the calendar, the Jewish calendar. When Noah came out of the ark on the 27th day of the second month, where was the green barley for him to know the time of the month? Where was the barley? There wasn't any. The whole world was flooded. Um, in 526 era A.D., there was a natural phenomenon, disaster. There was a two-year winter, and millions of people died from that two-year winter. The skies were covered over with volcanic ash, and um, from 526 to 529, it was a very, very devastating time in history. Um, the food supplies uh, failed, crops failed. There was no green barley. So where does the year begin? Do I have to be in Jerusalem to start my new year? Um, what if I live in Canada? What if I live in New Zealand or South Africa or Australia, Brazil, South America? How do I start my new year? I start my new year in a beeb, the green ear. <clears throat> it means ear of grain. So where do I find that ear of grain? In Genesis 1, 14 through 16, we're told that the sun, moon, and stars are for appointed times. There's a star, today is known as Spica, but historically it was called Abib. And Abib means ear of grain. Spica means green ear. So, how do I find that, okay? If I look at the Big Dipper, which is the most notable constellation in the skies, the arc of the handle, um, if you follow that curve and um, pass the handle about an additional one length of the handle, you're going to come to a bright star that's all by itself in the sky. That is Arcturus. And it's very easy to identify. You continue that arc for about the same distance. You'll come to another star that's right on the equator elliptic. And that star today is called Spica, historically a beep. And it is visible from every place on Earth. This is the star that Yahuwah spoke of six times in scripture it is called Hodesh Abib the month of Abib or the moon of Abib <clears throat> so that green ear if you're familiar with the constellation Virgo that and you can look that up on Stellarium or any any star chart that constellation Virgo, in her hand, all the drawings will show that she is holding a 
um, sheaf of grain or a stalk of grain and that grain that star spica abib is right where that stalk of grain is it's the green ear it's a star in the heavens one night every single year the full moon will transgress or transverse sorry transverse the sky through the night next to that star this is the only sign that's given in scripture for the beginning of a year or the beginning of any month there's no other sign 283 times the word hodesh is used in the old testament for new moon new month it is the full moon Kasei, Psalms 81.3, verifies that Kasei is the full moon. At the appointed time, the beginning of the month, Hodesh, the full new moon. At the Chog, your pilgrim feast. So the pilgrim feast at the beginning of the month, that's not trumpets. Trumpets is not a Chog. Um... It has to do with the Feast of Weeks, Shavuot. But we'll maybe get back to that. The error of the Jews. We cannot go out and look for barley in the field. It doesn't matter if I live in Canada and go by that growing cycle. It doesn't matter if I live in Australia and go by that growing cycle because they're opposite times of the year. One's in winter, one's in summer. So it would not make sense for Australia to keep the feasts of Yehua um, six months apart from those in Canada. The festivals are appointed times. They're predestined. They're, uh, it's the wedding date. The word for seasons in Genesis is moed. It's appointed times. And if you go to the root word, it uh, I think the word is ya'ad, and it means betrothed. Betrothal. So keeping the feasts of Yahuwah is part of the betrothal. If I'm going to be at the wedding supper, then I need to know when that wedding supper is. In 536, there was a winter that lasted several years. There was no sign. So how do we know to keep the feast. We've got to go back to the star. The one sign that's named in Scripture. There's no other sign for any other month. 283 times Hodesh is used for dates. 49 times directly from the mouth of Yahuwah. Hodesh. New month, new moon. <clears throat> So anybody that's trying to say that uh, a dark moon is the new moon, they are wrong. If anyone's saying that the barley harvest, um, the, the physical, literal barley harvest, has anything to do with the new year, they're wrong. Or the green ear. That green ear is a star, and it's a sign that can be seen from every point on earth. Every person can see it. The new moon rules the night. The full moon, in its, in its brightness, its fullness, rules one night every month. It rises at the setting of the sun, and it sets at the rising of the sun. That one night... That 
that points us to the new year is when that when the moon rules in its fullness what that star abib speaker that is the new year and that is spoken by yahuwah not by man man can't change it man can't corrupt it it's there and even in a year with 13 months the new year begins with abib the moon will be right next to that star Abib through the night. If anybody says there's another sign, they're in error. Abib. I've looked at every, I've read every verse, every chapter to study the context of Hodesh, the context of Yurok, two words for Yurok, and Kaseh. The new moon is Hodesh, and it is a full moon. The, the dark moon, the crescent moon, does not rule the night. And if there's any um, cloud cover at all, you can't see it. The full moon, you can have completely overcast skies. And the moon will still rule with all its glory, with all its greatness. The light will shine all through the night. That's the beginning of the month. When the when the star Abib is with the moon in all of its fullness and it rises with the setting sun and sets with the rising sun, we know that the year has begun and it doesn't matter where on this earth you are. It can be seen from every point. Noah didn't have green barley to harvest or to witness when he was on the ark. <clears throat> so I said I would get back to the dates. The 17th day of the second month when Noah went into the ark. Why that date? Well, the flood came in the 600th year of Noah. Some other significant event happened in the 600th year of Noah. Noah's grandfather, Methuselah, died. Noah's father was dead beforehand. It was Noah's responsibility to bury his grandfather. He would have been defiled. According to Numbers 9, Numbers chapter 9, there were certain men that were defiled because of the body of a man. They had buried someone. And they were unclean. They could not keep the Passover at its appointed time. They went to Moses and said, This is not of our doing. This is not something that we done. We didn't sin. Why can we not keep the Passover? We're defiled. Moses said, let me inquire of Yahuwah and see what Yahuwah says. All Moses had to do was go back and look what he had already written. Noah went into the ark on the 17th day of the second month. Okay, So those two men, <clears throat> Moses came back and said, Thus says Yahuwah, If any man be defiled because of the body of a man, or is on a long journey, and cannot keep the Passover at its appointed time, then he's to keep the Passover in the second month, on the fourteenth day of the month at even, with all of the ordinances of the first Passover. So that includes unleavened bread and first fruits. This is significant people. Yah's calendar is written in stars. One star points the new year. There's no other sign that is given under a Hodesh date 
That's Strong's number H2320. That is given with a bead six times. And Hodesh, by the mouth of Yahuwah, 49 times. 283 times used for dates. So, John had a vision. Revelation. The books were brought out and there was no man in heaven or earth that was found worthy to open the seals of the book and John began to weep. Why did John begin to weep? There was no man in heaven or earth. And the angel said, look. And he looked again. And behold, there was a man or a lamb as though it had been slain. No man in heaven or earth. It was the day of ascension. It's on the 27th day of the second month. <clears throat> Forty days after the 17th day of the first month. So why did Noah go into the ark on the 17th day of the second month? Passover is on the 14th day at even. The 15th day is Shabbat and the 16th day is first fruits. These are the dates that are given for the death, burial, and resurrection. Messiah was crucified on the 14th day. He rested on the 7th day. Shabbat. And when Mary went to the tomb early in the morning, on the first day of the week, he was already risen. First fruits on the 17th day. These dates are important, people. If we're going to be true followers of the Word, we have to keep these dates. And knowing when they are, study the Scripture. Find them. Um, Exodus 16.23 is the first mention of Sabbath in Scripture. <clears throat> Exodus 16 tells us that the children of Israel came to a certain camp on the 15th day and that the manna fell or the, the quail came that evening and manna fell in the morning would have been on the 16th day first fruits and they gathered manna for six days the sixth day they gathered a double portion the seventh day was a Shabbat the 15th day was a Shabbat but they had not been instructed of the Shabbats yet So the 22nd day was a Shabbat. Then the 29th day, by default, had to be a Shabbat. The 8th day is mentioned multiple times in Scripture, and it's a Shabbat. The 15th day is mentioned multiple times in Scripture. It's always a Shabbat. The last great day of the Feast of Tabernacles, it's always a Shabbat. It's the 22nd day. The new moon begins the month and the year. The 8th, the 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th are always Sabbath days. 
the new moon is always the first day of the month. Again, the 8th, 15th, 22nd, 29th days are always Sabbath. Repeating cycle. <clears throat> I hope this is uh, powerful and uplifting. Search the scriptures. Find yourself approved. Quit listening to man. Quit listening to Jews. They'll lead you astray. Praise y'all in all things. Hallelujah.